Hello and welcome to another episode of the Asian Seller Podcast. I'm your host, Meghla Bhardwaj, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about photography. We're going to be sharing strategies to help increase your conversions. And to talk about that, I have Keith O'Brien from Page One, that is an Amazon full service consultancy. Hey, Keith, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for joining me. So Keith, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your background? How did you, um, you know, get into Amazon and how do you help Amazon sellers? Sure. So uh, the first part of that, so I've been an entrepreneur most of my life. Uh, I think I started my first business when I was 20. Uh, that one failed miserably. So I, I, I was like 22 and 35,000 in business debt. Uh, trying to figure out how to what I was going to do, but uh, made some better decisions over the next couple of years and got myself out of debt and built a nice business. I used to sell uh, personal development, transformational courses and seminars. Um, so I learned a lot about that was like early days online. You know, I remember uh, I, we like did our first email marketing campaign, you know, uh, to a whole bunch of AOL users back in the day. I'm really dating myself here and making myself sound super old uh half the audience doesn't like thinks aol is uh you know the, but back then they used to market with these little they used to give out these little uh cd roms all over the place but anyway back on track so uh one business led to another as they often do and uh about five years ago uh a business partner of mine an old friend of mine uh started a company called i love to review which was the first product review company in the Amazon space. Um, I really loved the idea. And so I partnered into that company a couple months later. Uh, I think we, the launch was in October 14. I joined the company in December. And then I, did, I ended up uh, taking over the company as CEO in April of the next year. So I ran that company for about another year and a half up until that famed early December early October in 2016 when Amazon made it against TOS to do incentivized reviews. So um, that led us into uh, starting an agency. Uh, we had thousands of clients that we had helped made a, make a ton of money through the review service over the last couple of years. And uh, we had a great reputation. Kind of how we handled that exit was, was you know, we really tried to stay long-term and thinking long-term. So we just really looked at what do we know about Amazon that most people don't? Where can we serve the, you know, the community? How can we uh, really make a difference and help people build a business? Um, and so we started the agency and we've added service after service um, uh, over the last couple of years. And so we really do it, do the full spectrum. So from uh, content optimization, starting with keyword research and copywriting uh, to uh, product photography and A plus and EBC design uh, through to ad management, uh, and then all the way through to full brand management where we're running the entire company business for, for a seller. Right. So, okay. So let's talk about, uh, photography and images and, you know, that's of course really important. Um, as far as conversions, um, you know, and sales are concerned on Amazon, it's probably, I would say like maybe the most important aspect of a listing so can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, why images and photographs are so important? And, um, you know, do you have any case studies or statistics uh, sure. to, to, to tell us like how conversions increased when you optimized the image or enhanced, uh, you know, the images on a listing? There's a lot in that, in those questions there. So let's see if we can uh, break that down. So, yeah, I think ultimately why, uh, your image stack, and I'll just, I'll talk about images, your, the visual representation of your product, right? So we've got two things. We've got the stack of images, and then we have your EBC or A+, plus, as it's now called, uh, content if you're brand registered, right? Um, so both of which are very, very important, but ultimately, you know, people are, shoppers are lazy, right? You know, we have, we've, we've dumbed down the shopping experience so much that People don't want to spend very much time. Uh, they're relatively lazy. Uh, if it's uh, um, if it's a product that is not super expensive, you know, they they scan the title, they scan the price, they scan the the star rating on the reviews. Uh, 
but then they spend time looking down the stack of images, right? The, most people are, are visually, are dominant visual learners, right? So, and then they'll scan the, the stack of images and we just have such a small amount of time to, uh, to capture someone's attention uh, and to engage them, right? So that first image, the main hero shot, that's really the image to focus on to get a click because that's the only image that shows up in search, right? Um, we can come back later and talk about gray areas of that image, black hat areas of that image, what Amazon may be looking to do uh, probably this year. Um, uh, but then that image starts people off and that gets the click, right? It's that it's your main profile file image on your on your dating profile right it's the it's the main image on your tinder profile um, uh, then once someone actually clicks in the rest of the images have a very specific job and that job is to tell the visual story in an emotionally uh, emotionally charged emotionally captivating way and that's probably where most sellers miss the boat um, we tend to think in facts, but we actually buy in stories. We buy on emotion. We make decisions based mostly on emotion. Otherwise, why would we keep buying so much crap that we really don't need? You know, it's, it's not factual, it's, it's emotional, right? Um, people are deciding to do something because it raises their status in life, right? And this thing will make me feel this way. It'll make me uh, experience this. Other people have done this and it really brings us a level up. So what does that mean? And I'll, I'll tap it off and then I'll throw it back to you for questions. So what does that mean in terms of images? So I think what our team does before we start anything is we dig into the product and we ask two really, really important questions. Who buys this and why? Right. So most people like the why is what most people miss. Why is someone buying this product? What is it doing for them? What problem does it solve? What are the lists of problems that this uh, like the, 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 the things that they don't like dealing with that this product inserted in their life is going to provide a solution for? It? And if you can highlight those things in the images, it really does an emotional pull uh, for for the consumer. And 90% of sellers don't do that, right? And so you have an opportunity for your images to stand out above the competition if you can really get into the psychology of the buyer. Um, you asked for a story, so I'll give you, a, I'll give you a two. Um, one is hard to separate from the optimization. So we have a, a larger client. They're doing about 20 million a year on Amazon. Um, uh, so all their products you know, are, are moving along pretty well, but they did a little test with us and they gave us one listing to work on. Uh, and we did, we did the content optimization. We did all new photos and we did the A plus design. Um, that product was, that particular product was doing around 15,000 a month in revenue. So they have a big product line. That's a good seller, solid, steady, um, uh, in the luggage category. Right? So, we did a test with them. We tracked it back after six months and uh, everything on that listing performance wide had doubled. So their discover, their sessions doubled, their conversion rate uh, doubled, their revenue doubled. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the discoverability is really all about the actual content and keywords that we wrote for them. But conversion rate, uh, sales, so much, all of that is really uh, dependent on the photos. The other one was very, very recent. That, that was uh, earlier last year, but the other one was very recent. So we have a, uh, a very large client, a uh, Fortune 50 client that sells uh, safety products, right? So one of their products is uh, an escape ladder, right? So like imagine you get a fire in your house, you got to throw this ladder out the second story window and climb down. You wouldn't, you know, it's a thing, right? I mean, think about the amount of people in the world that live in apartments, right? That have multiple stories and all this stuff. Or second floor, usually in America, is where people's bedrooms are, right? So uh, all we were, we redid all their listings and all their A plus, all their images, and then they're a vendor. So we also did 360 degree spins for them, um, but. All we were able to upload before the end of the year was their images and their A plus design. 
And uh, so checking back with them in December, now that's an escape ladder, but they were ranking number one in search for ladder and ladders. Now, all that's changed was their, was their images, their, their visual content. So they're outranking a company like Little Giant, that foldable ladder, or just a regular old green A-frame ladder, which should sell way more than an escape ladder. But they were number one in search for both of those keywords, and their, their volume was way, way up. All that changed was their visuals. Now, to, to tie that back in, we did a, a image, a lifestyle image, with a, a, a wife handing a dog out the window to the husband on the ladder as they were coming out of the house. So, I mean, if you think about like the emotional grab that that image has on someone, they're handing the dog through, getting the dog to safety uh, before the mom comes out. So. Yeah, and again, who buys this and why and how do we get it as emotionally of a charged experience for the consumer as we possibly can. Okay, that's awesome. It, images also help with rank, right? Because when your conversion rate is higher, then I guess you rank higher on Amazon as well. So it's Correct. not just, you know, you're getting more sales, you know, via the image, but you're ranking better as well because your conversion rates are better. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into uh, Amazon's ranking factors, but the number of sales you're making and the conversion rate of your listing are two of the biggest, if not the two biggest. Mm -hmm. um, but we can now look inside of brand analytics in the back of, of Seller Central, and they're giving us now the, uh, the three listings that are getting the highest click share on a, on a keyword. So it's really interesting. You'll see... Uh, if you study that a little bit, you'll see uh, it, it's not always the top three listings that are getting the most click share. You know, you'll see, uh, you'll see listings that are four and five spots down the page uh, that are getting that are dominating click share for whatever reason. So it's a really interesting kind of data dive to jump in and see if you can find some, you know, look at your competition and look at what they're doing uh, well um, and uh, uh, and do it across a number of different search terms to see if you can see some some consistencies. Yeah, right. but conversion is a massive impact because Amazon wants to maximize revenue per search. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of images that there are on Amazon and you know which ones are the most important, most critical. So of course there's a hero image, there's a main image, and then you've got infographics and some people do competitor you know, comparison mm -hmm. charts and lifestyle images. So can you maybe just, uh, you know, give an overview of the different types, the key types of images there are and tell us maybe which ones are, you know, the really important ones? Sure. Well, I, I, I think they're all important and they're important for different reasons, right? So uh, if you're playing by TOS, your hero shot has to be the product only on white background. And so I... Uh, uh, you can't have anything else in there. You can't have props. You can't have graphics. You can't have people. Now, it's probably the most abused TOS, you know, guideline in Amazon. Um, even Amazon themselves on their own products breaks the image TOS all the time. Uh, so um, I've personally never seen anyone get suspended for an image infraction. Uh, and we've, this is over thousands and thousands of accounts. The listing might get suppressed, but then you change the image and you're right back up. So it's one of those areas where I think people tend to ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Um, so, but I'm not saying anything about that, right? So uh, anyway, so you got the hero shot, you know, the, the just the, the real clean tips on the hero shot, you know, make sure your lighting is really, really good. You you know, get it retouched so that when people uh, hover over it and the magnifier shows up, you're not going to see all the dust and the hair and all that stuff that is going to be on your product, right? It's just fingerprints, reflections, all these things. You just cannot prep a product enough to get all that stuff out pre-production, but you have to take it out of post. Um, uh, but you'd be surprised. Like I, I remember I was doing a, a and I, I didn't even know, but I was doing an example in a presentation. I zoomed in on this like uh, computer mouse product, and there's a like there's a gray 
hair over the top of it when you zoom in. And it's gross. It's disgusting, right? Um, so you want to make sure you avoid that. Um, the rest of them, so we call them a custom shot, right? So a custom for us would be it's going to include props. There's not going to be any people in it, but it might be on a, it might be a situation. You know, if it's, you're, you're selling this coffee cup, it might be on a table with some coffee beans in front, coffee pot in back, um, uh, just staged, right? It's styled, right? And those are great because people start to see the, the product in an experience, right? Um, and then you have uh, what we call lifestyle images. And so these are going to have something that's alive, right? It might be a baby. It might be a person. It might be a dog. It might be a dog and a baby. It might be a dog and a person, you know. Um, we've done shots with horses, right? I mean, that's just, it's crazy. So, uh, um, so those are the three main. And then an infographic really can be added. A graphic can be added over the top of any image, right? So uh, most of the time you're going to start with a white background image and you're going to add your infographic over the top or a graphic design. But uh, it's really effective to add a graphic of some level over a custom shot. You know, you've got this space available, right? Or on a lifestyle where you may just put, you know, a, a small line of, of copy in a very, you know, uh, visually attractive way. Because again, people are scanning the image and your job is to tell a visual story. And so, you know, if you can tell people what you want them to be thinking as they're moving through the images, it's really, really effective. Um, so those are the different types, and we'll leave A plus for later if we want to talk about that. Yeah. So let's talk specifically about lifestyle images. Um, you know, many sellers don't do lifestyle images. You know, so are they really critical? And have you seen, you know, a conversions or, or listings performing significantly better when you add lifestyle images? Yeah. So it's a couple of things there, and this is. I never understood this even before starting a photography team, but so, you know, the seller works on it. I mean, it might take you six months, sometimes a year to source a product, right? And uh, you're working on it, it's your, you know, it's your side hustle or you want it to be your new, your new full-time business. You might spend five or 10 grand to get that product, maybe even more to get that product to market. And then you get to the right before the starting line and you're trying to save a few hundred bucks by not doing not including a model in your in your ph photography it just blows my mind that people get i mean people get really right to the most important parts of the business right because sourcing is you know somewhat straightforward right you get a decent price you can figure out how to make it work but it's all the things that happen from when you are are building your listing forward that really make the difference especially with the increased competition so Yes, I think lifestyle are super important. I think that uh, when you add lifestyle to your photography, people see themselves in the experience of using it, which is why you wanted to do it. It's the reason why most commercials have people in them, right? You know, you don't just see a, a, a you know, it's why the home shopping network or QVC, you know, it's not just a cup sitting there. It's someone using it and talking about it. So, um, I mean, the difference between, for example, for us, the difference between a package with no models or a model is like 500 bucks. So you're, you're really making a $500 decision that, I mean, think about it. How many units do you have to sell to recoup 500 bucks? Like, and what I think what happens is people get to that starting line and they look at like, a couple thousand dollars in expense on really good, high quality uh, photography. And they're like, Oh my God, it's so much money. But is it like, do you plan to sell a thousand units your first year? You know, 2000 units your first year, how long, how many units do you plan to spend, you know, sell over the lifetime of this product? Let's just say it's a thousand and it costs you a couple grand to get good photos. That's $2 a, a, a sale amortized over your first year. Right? So it's, it's just not, it's just not expensive. It's probably the best uh, payoff ROI of the money going into your listing of all the things that you could do. Um, so yeah, I think uh, lifestyle images are super, super important. That was the big difference in the example I gave you. Both of those examples went from white background with graphics to with lifestyles. 
better white background, better graphics, but we added lifestyles and the results were fantastic. Okay. You talked about adding emotion and, you know, people buy based on emotion. Can you give some examples of, uh, you know, how to add emotion in photos? You gave this one example of the ladder, you know, and and the lady handing the dog out. What are some other, you know, examples or, or, uh, sure. I think like you think through like, okay, and again, go back to that, who buys this and why? And if you really can identify the main reasons on why they buy it, um, we do, we do everything in life based on two kind of psychological drivers. We are moving towards pleasure or away from pain, right? So those are the only two things that motivate every decision that we make in life. I mean, think about it. Towards pleasure, away from pain. Now, unfortunately for the human condition, moving away from pain is a much, much bigger influence, right? It would be, our world would be very, very different if we could get the human being, this is a side tangent, right? But if we want to make the world a better place, if we could be driven by, you know, the desire for gain and the happiness and the joy more so than going away from the crap in our lives, right? I mean, think about it, right? You know, uh, someone's super overweight, they have a heart attack, then they finally start exercising, right? Um, So, uh, you know, you might have a big bad breakup and what do you do? You cut your hair short, you go to the gym, you start getting your attitude on track, right? So, uh, so yeah, so thinking into the whys, like, and what, what is this, what problems is this product helping someone solve? Um, take for example, uh, oh, I'll go back, see if I can do it with something as, as plain as a coffee cup, right? Yeah. So most of the world is addicted to coffee for first thing in the morning, right? And You know, how many people say, don't ever talk, don't even talk to me before I got coffee. So, uh, or I am not a morning person, right? Uh, You know, but now post coffee, they're a joy, right? The caffeine is running through their system and they're back to human. So think about visually how you might be able to represent that um, uh, inside of a photo. Maybe, uh, maybe someone is, you know, until they have their coffee. Um, uh, and then you want to, you want to play on both sides. So you want to play on the pleasure points of that as well. Right. So the things that people love about coffee, the smell, the flavor, right. So, you know, this might mean, uh, adding, uh, the steam in post-production coming off the cup, right. It might be a close up into the cup. Like imagine, you know, you get a nice looking, um, woman, holding your cup like this in the morning, looking down, you know, just really just, cause that is a very, and look at your smile, right? Like you can, you can, you're yeah. in that experience. Oh my goodness. It feels so it's warm. It tastes so good. So these are the things, right? Um, and that's a, that's a good example of, but there's all kinds of, of stuff and there's products that play into that a lot easier than what I just had to do. <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. That's great advice. So, um, should should sellers do their own photographs? I mean, you know, sometimes like they don't, they think they don't have the budget, or you know, sure. they just want to do the photos themselves. So, if somebody does, first of all, sh- you know, is that recommended? Um, and if they do want to do pro- uh, photo- uh, photographs themselves, then you know, what are some of the bare minimum requirements that, uh, you know, are are needed? Yeah. Look, I think that like anything, right? Like, I mean, obviously we have an agency, so we do all this, these things for for sellers, but we have clients that do all their own photos and we run their advertising, right? We have clients that, you know, love to do the writing, the copy, the keyword research, and we do their photos, right? So I think ultimately, uh, you know, sellers are going to fall into either three categories. They're either going to be all DIY, right? They're going to do everything themselves. Great. Um, they're going to do some things themselves based on what they like. And then there's going to be what I would call the, the full-time conductor. They just want to, they want to own the business. They want to drive the business, but they don't want to do the pieces. Um, Cause ultimately no one's getting in this business to, to be, to have to do keyword research all the time. And, 
you know, micromanager advertising and all these things. We're, we're in this business to create a bit of freedom, right? So, uh, or at least most people are, right? So I think it's fine. You just need to really be honest with yourself of whether or not you can pull it off, right? So there are super cost effective ways like, you know, uh, you know, if, if you don't want to do it yourself, you can probably find a freelance photographer in your local area that is going to work for, you know, much more uh, affordable rates than what we could do here because uh, they're not running a company. It's just themselves. Right. So their pricing is usually based on a daily rate. Um, the thing to really be careful with there is most freelance photographers have very, very limited experience in product photography. Uh, and they even have less experience shooting products for Amazon. So our, our lead photographer is a second generation, 20 year experience product commercial photographer, and we still had to train them how to do it for Amazon. So if you're gonna go on your own, then study. Don't just take your freaking iPhone, uh, you know, think the new camera upgrade is gonna do the job study what's you know there's plenty of ways to learn some of the skills you got to get good lighting you got to get a decent camera you can do it with an iphone but you still need lighting right you still need to prep your product well and dust it and take off the fingerprints and all that stuff what i wouldn't recommend then i would recommend if you're going to do the photos yourself find a professional uh retoucher and get your stuff professionally retouched um, there's just so many things like the, the, the work, you know, there's equally as much work, if not more in post-production for really great photography as there is in pre-production or the actual shooting. Um, but again, like, don't be cheap. Like, you know, like there's so many other ways to cut costs. Like this is, this is what's representing your product to the marketplace. You want it to look good. And, uh, it's still one of the easiest areas to differentiate is with a great actual listing. And it really, I mean, think about it. So all your, all your listeners, they're doing product research, right? And they're looking through Amazon and they're seeing what's selling and what's not. But think about the, the things that they're looking for, right? One of them is a product that's selling fairly well, but the marketing sucks, right? They have bad pictures, bad listing, bad copy. So if you're gonna put yourself in that same situation, you're opening yourself up to competition that you don't necessarily need to do right that's totally yeah, it's a bit of a it creates a bit of a moat no one wants to take on the product that everything is done amazing you know the photos look fantastic the a plus is awesome copies written went really well like that's the listing we want to leave alone we don't want to compete with that guy right right so let's talk about uh testing and a b testing images so how important do you think it is to, you know, A-B test and how do you suggest sellers to do that? Are there any tools that you recommend? Yeah, it's, 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 it's an underserved area of Amazon. You know, it's, you know, you, if you're, you know, if you have a Shopify store, you've got a thousand choices of plugins for testing. Um, but on Amazon, there's not that many. Um, so the two that I know of that we've used, so, so PicFu, I, I like the guys over there. Uh, I know the owners, they're good, solid people. Um, in PicFu, you can run a, a split test on two different hero shots. Um, uh, and, you know, and the, but the thing on PicFu, and I've been honest with the owners, like I think that um, it gives you some insight, but it's really, it's not someone that's actually buying your product. So it's someone that's, pretending to buy your product and so you know uh there's always that change in the experiment when the you know the the outcome of an experiment changes when anything little you know when the people know they're being observed um, they know they're in a test and so they might say oh look yeah i would rather buy this product when it's shown in the hero image with a box with the packaging over this one that's not but again they're in a they're in a testing environment Right. Mm -hmm. So I think the only one that I know of that you can split test when photos are live on Amazon, uh, Amazon is uh, Splitly mm -hmm. um, by uh, I think Jungle, Jungle Scout. Jungle Scout. Yeah. The only one I know that the challenge with Splitly is for most sellers is you just need a fair amount of data. And so with any testing uh, or anything that you think is uh, correct on Amazon, you want to make sure you have 
called statistical significance, right? So you need to have enough impressions, you know, impressions, sessions, and clicks and sales to have it actually, the data actually hold up, right? Because a small data set, you know, often doesn't have enough statistical significance to make a decision. And, and this is an area that most sellers really mess up on. You know, they, they see something happen one day and they freak out and like, oh, I got to change something, you know, and then they, they get 20 more sessions and they got to change, they change something else. It's just, it's just not enough data. You got to have a lot of patience on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now some sellers also use um, rendered images or, you know, like Photoshopped images. I was talking to um, uh, a service provider a couple of weeks ago on the podcast and they do Photoshopped images and the images look very real. So I was looking at a few images where there was a tablecloth and, you know, there was a table where people were eating dinner and everything it was entirely photoshopped but it looked very real so you know is that a big trend nowadays and is that really advisable or is it always good to you know have like real people and real props yeah so there's there's a few different kind of uh, variations of this right so there's there's true 3d rendered images and that is a is a very different process right so you've got to get the the renderings done um, and then, and that's usually one person and then someone else will, will, will put that into a stock photo, right? So the whole thing is fake. Like the, yeah. the, the image is created from scratch. It's not an actual real picture. Um, the advantage is you can, you can spin it, right? It's a 3d render. So you can manipulate it any way you want to drop it into an actual uh, stock photo. So that's the advantage. They're actually against TOS, so they're not actually allowed by Amazon. Um, now, again, not very, very enforced. So, uh, but, uh, but per terms of service, 3D renders aren't actually allowed. Um, so the advantage is that is you can really make the product look perfect, right? So a 3D render, like for even for like a white background shot, could really make it look perfect. You don't have to muck around with getting the lighting right and all that stuff. They are fairly expensive to get that initial 3D uh, image created. Um, and I will say this, uh, there's way more bad Photoshop work on Amazon than good Photoshop work. So uh, it is very, it's a very, very finite skill set to, to get someone that's really good at that. And contrary to what most people think, it actually takes way longer than setting up that entire dining room table and taking a real photo. It could take hours to get that to look right. So um, we do we do a lot of what I would call it's it's part studio work, part Photoshop work. So, for example, we may that dining room table. Let's say we're you're selling that same, same coffee cup. You got a dining room table. You're, you're zooming in the coffee cup. You may have a couple of people sitting at a, a dining table or a little cafe table. We may set that whole thing up in the studio that all that whole thing and take it on white background. Then we clip out that entire image and we might drop that into the scene that we want, right? Because, you know, even though you're selling this little $2 coffee cup, you want to show it in a million dollar home or, you know, in a backyard that's beautiful or, you know, in a cafe or the street in Paris, right? Now you can't go to all those places and most sellers don't want to pay a location fee to do that. So we can take a stock photo of this beautiful million dollar kitchen and drop in the front experience and it looks amazing. You wouldn't even know it. Um, so we do that a lot, right? So, uh, you know, we may take, so, you know, we're, you know, say you're selling a, uh, the water filtration unit like where you have in your backpack, right? Mm -hmm. Like for hiking. So we may shoot that guy in the studio with his backpack on and clip them out and then drop them into a mountain scene. And it looks phenomenal. You would not be able to tell the difference between real because the more you can have of the photo that's real, the more it's going to look perfect in the actual final product. Interesting. So what are some of the common mistakes that you see sellers making, you know, when, or in general, in terms of images, 
what are some of the mistakes that you see, whether, you know, the photos are taken by sellers themselves or other photographers? Yeah. Um, I, I think probably, so one of the mistakes just mentally, I think, is a lot of times there's a lot of products that sell really well with really crappy photography on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and we mistakenly say, oh, well, this product's doing well and the, the images aren't very good. I can get away with that. The reality is you just don't know the full story, right? And so you may assume that it's doing well despite the images, but uh, you know, it may have been up there for 10 years, right? They may have this massive off Amazon presence. They may be a brick and mortar and have name recognition. So, you know, you get a, you know, Nike can put one photo up there and they're going to, no, they're not even on Amazon anymore, but you know, Adidas or as everyone else in the world says, Adidas, um, you know, they can put one photo and get away with it because everyone knows their brand. And so uh, it's, it's, it's unrealistic to think that you can compete with brand name products by doing, not doing better marketing. So that's, I think that's probably the biggest mistake. Um, uh, or an Amazon product, right? You look at an Amazon product and they've got one photo in there and they're selling thousands of units a month. Well, you know, they own the store, right? So don't think that you can, you can do the same. Um, I think this, the, the, the second thing though is really what we started with is not asking the right questions. So mm -hmm. they're starting off and they, they focus all their product images on selling the features. It's this, it's that. Now telling people about your features is very important, but you've got to move into the benefits uh, to really grab the emotion. So um, there's, there's a difference between what the product does and then what the product does for you, right? You know, it's arguably an Android phone is, has better functionality than an iPhone. That's what all people say. But iPhones are way cooler, right? And, you know, and it's a better experience, right? No one oohs and ahs when they open up their Android. You know, people, people save their iPhone box for years, right? Yeah, so uh, it's so funny. So it's uh, it's the benefit, it's what it does for you. And that's really, most people focus on what it does and you gotta focus on what it does for you. Okay, that makes sense. So we've talked a lot about, you know, all the different strategies, um, but can you maybe give us like five top strategies to increase um, conversions, you know, five photography strategies? Yep. So if you want a formula, right? So a uh, hero shot should be the best angle with the best lighting and uh, represent the largest amount of value that you possibly can in that hero shot. So what that might mean is if your product comes with uh, like a whole bunch of different pieces, you may want to show all of those in the hero shot because uh, it's a higher perceived value. Now, if those other pieces don't have a perceived value, don't show them in the hero shot. So mm -hmm. highest perceived value layout, best angle. You don't want to take it straight on. You generally want to come from a little bit of an angle. Uh, you don't want to take it flat. So like you're, you're taking it right at the countertop. You want a little bit. So you create some depths, right? So um, like if you take this flat as opposed to down you want to show a little bit of the depth of that much that shot compared to that shot much better right so um you want to show depth uh and you want to stretch that hero shot you want it to be almost edge to edge on the longest side of the product so that you take up the most amount of space and that your product is the biggest it possibly can be in search right so, and that's the decision when it comes to showing it with your packaging that you really have got to make. And that's one that you probably want to test because if you put your packaging into the main hero image, your product is going to be much, much smaller, right? And so, because you have to create some room in the frame to show the packaging, unless you really set it way off to the back and you have your product in the foreground. So that's a testing point because sometimes like people fall in love with really good designer packaging and they want to show it 
they want to show that first image, but then their product is only taking up this small part of the, the frame. Okay, so that's number one. Then just get in your head the visual story. So it's okay to dive into features if you follow that directly with the benefits of those features, right? So uh, you want to tell this story, what it does, why, why, what it does for people, show it in use a couple of times. Um, uh, if a comparison uh, for, for a lot of products works really, really well, just be careful about how you talk about your competitors um, so you don't get in trouble. Uh, and utilize graphics to put in people's mind what you want them to be thinking about your product as they're going through the images. And then really, the one thing you should test is the order, right? So uh, a lot of people, like, we'll just, we'll give them the, the stack of images. We have, you know, like our packages might have, you know, five white backgrounds so that you can, we have all these close-ups on the features. That's the other thing, right? So, you know, a graphic could be as simple as, uh, you know, uh, the hero shop, but then a, a zoomed in on the three or four top features. And you don't necessarily even need any, need any words in that image, but people are already zooming in on it uh, and can see that the, your attention to detail on this part of the product that's really, really important. It could be on a strap that you've reinforced with extra stitching. It could be a certain type of zipper that doesn't break after two months, right? Like most, most zippers. Uh, it could be uh, this wood grain that you've selected, a specific kind of wood that's just gorgeous when you look up close, right? Um, so all these things, these are things that you want to make and show off as much as you can without people even having to zoom in, okay? Uh, and then just test the order. You may convert better throwing a, a lifestyle image in image number two, right? So they see your hair shot and then boom, they're in use of it. And then you drop into the, the, the infographics. So but based on um, your experience, what order works well? Uh, it's all different for all different products. You know, I think that um, I, it depends on the product. It depends on how emotional that purchase is. It depends on uh, uh, the price point of that product. But I think, you know, hero shot, Get them engaged mentally, emotionally from the second photo and then move them through your visual story. Right? So that engagement, that second photo might be best as an infographic. It might be best as your, uh, your white background with your package. It might be best as a lifestyle. So you just really have to test that out. Okay. Yeah. If, if, if you've been on Amazon a year and you've never moved the order of your images around, shame on you. Okay, you can't you can't bitch about that and your sales not being where you want if you're not if you're not looking consistently to improve your listing. Um, but I want to want to just add on that, like, I mean, everyone's always looking to increase their sales. What I find, you know, people will often dump or think they need to dump and move on to a different product, but ultimately they just haven't done a good enough job marketing on that product. There's a lot of great products. Um, the difference really is, I mean, product selection is super important, but I've seen lots of great products that just have not done a very good job on marketing and that's why they're not doing well. Interesting. Okay. So let's come back to your top five strategies. So you gave two, right? Um, okay. So understand who buys this and why most important okay. strategy. Okay. okay. Strategy number two, go deeper than that and really understand how your product solves those problems, right? Who buys this and why? And then think through, okay, how are they using this? What are they going to be doing? How does it solve that problem? So I think I'll spend, I'll say those are the two top and we okay. haven't even taken a picture yet, right? So, I mean, you get it and you start to get kind of what goes into really, really great photography and so much of it happens before you ever snap a photo, right? Um, next is as good as the hero shot as you possibly can get, right, you know, at the best angle, highest perceived value. Uh, fourth would be tell that visual story. You know, 
who buys this, why? Okay, now what's really important that they see as they're visually looking through the images? What's the path that you're leading them down, right? So hero shot grab their attention. Now you've got them. How do you keep their attention through your entire image stack so that they can move from the images without reading a thing and go over there and click the little yellow button and add to cart, right? Um, so visual story, right? Um, and then have you nailed the feature benefits of, uh, okay. of your product? So uh, I'd say most, those are the five most important. You can do that through a variety of different types of images but if you nail those core things you're going to be in good shape okay that's awesome that's that's really good advice so um yeah that's that was great keith so can you tell us a little bit more about your services and how can people reach you and sure. um yeah awesome so the website is the best place and it's page dot one so it's not a dot com it's a super fancy url page dot one um and uh, that's the best place to reach us. We have account managers that will get back. And, you know, we actually talk to our clients. You're not doing business straight just through email. Um, uh, you can call up and, you know, we have a, a staff of 11 at the studio in, in Florida. Um, and, uh, you know, we have independent teams that all work together that each oversee the specific areas. So, um, content optimization specialists. So we have keyword specialists, we have content writers, um, and then within the photography team, production managers, photographers, graphic designers, retouchers, assistants and stylists, you know, and, uh, and then the PPC and advertising team, those guys are data geek nerds that, that love to, to drill through the data. Um, and they're just really, really talented at what they do. And then all kinds of, you know, account managers that oversee and work with the clients directly. So, um, yeah, I mean, on the, on the smaller side, we can optimize and get a, I mean, we really see ourselves as more conversion optimization specialists and it's not really talked about a lot on Amazon. Uh, it's more of a Shopify, you know, conversion rate optimization. But the, the reality is Amazon's got the traffic if you can get in front of it. Uh, and so, uh, that all that keyword research is really going to determine your, your discoverability. And then once you have eyeballs, you need to really maximize user engagement. And there's certain things that it's a combination of the visuals plus well-written copy that are going to keep someone on your page long enough to actually decide to buy. Um, so any part of that puzzle that we can help you with, we're certainly happy to, you know, we work with clients, large and small, you're launching your first product and you want to do it right if you've got a business of you know a half a dozen products and you want to take things to the next level um our best i'll leave you with a story our, our probably our best breakout uh account this last half of the year uh we started with a seller he's american but he lives in australia uh, we started with him uh he was doing uh, 38,000 a month in revenue, you know, um, good solid start. Um, he was, we, he was doing about, uh, he was spending a couple grand a month on advertising. Um, we immediately did an audit and saw he was really underspending on his ads, but he didn't really know how to ramp it up and get it to the next level. What he had done on his advertising was really good, but he was really underspending. And so we started, we wrote a couple new listings for him. Uh, we did consultation for him on his photos. So we didn't do any photography for him. He had an in-house, his team in-house did all the images. Uh, but what I noticed was they had some great design work, but the image stacks didn't make sense. And so we did some consultation for them and we gave them feedback on an image stack. Uh, and then they stamped out that formula across all their listings and updated all the information themselves. So they really saved a lot of money there. So we started running their ads and managing their ad spend. We, got, we took them from 38,000 a month to 105,000 a month from June to October. And we got them really, really primed and prepped for the, the holiday rush. So their best 30 day rolling total in December was 385,000. Wow. So from 38 to 385 in yeah. uh, seven months, six months. That's incredible. Yeah. So, so, 
that's kind of exciting. Yeah. So where are most of your, uh, where is most of your team based out of? Uh, are they mostly in the U.S. or do you also have people in, in the Philippines or Asia? Yeah. So um, we have all of our folks are U.S. based, right? So okay. uh, we have uh, we have some virtual account managers that have been with us for a long time that are in different cities. But our core team is all out of our office and studios in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, we have outsourced uh, content writers that basically we keep full time busy. We have some. Uh, uh, we the thing about with agency work is is you always need backup, right? So because mm-hmm. uh, you don't know, like this podcast could run, and you might have hundreds of people that want all their stuff done in the next thirty days. Well, you know that just doesn't always happen, right? So you need. We have. We have. Uh, we have outsourced graphic designers that we give work to pretty consistently that we've worked with. I mean, and some of those we keep full time busy. So everything's overseen and really most of the core work is done in house in Florida. Um, but as we get, when we have periods of time where we're busier, like our busy time is August to October. We're cr- just crazy. So you need additional help in those, those times of the year to, to really, you know, handle all the demand. Okay. Yeah. So, can you just tell us maybe approximately what are the rates for your, you know, photography packages? Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we start, um, we have a la carte that are super cheap, like a white background image is, you know, depending on how many you do could be anywhere from 30 bucks to 60 bucks. So um, really inexpensive. Uh, we give breaks on the volume of that. Right. Um, but then we have packages that, uh, I mean, so that's a white background. A single lifestyle photo with a model styled on location might be three hundred dollars, right? Um, you know, think about it, we got to pay the model, we got to book this, you know, the, the place, we got the time to go out to the place, you know, all that stuff. So what we do though for Amazon sellers is we bundle those together in a structure that we know works, right? So, you know, we'll have a package for as low as like eight nine seven that might include uh, like five white background photos and four custom shots, right? So this would be someone that doesn't want to do a lifestyle, don't, doesn't want to, you know, then the infographics can be added to anything, right? So, but the Amazon packages start at eight, nine, seven and go up from there. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much, Keith, for your time and um, for sharing such good strategies and, you know, tips and advice for sellers. So, yeah, um, anything else that you want to add? Any last words, uh, you know, you want to say before we sign off? No, it's, 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 a, it's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. And uh, hopefully uh, your listeners take some of the information uh, and uh, go apply it into their business and see uh, some, some nice gains um, and add to their, the, 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 their revenue from their side hustle, which is, uh, you know, with, with the end of the day, wherever they get work done or if they do it themselves, if they can build a business and help take their, their, their life and their family's life to the next level, that's, that's why we're all here. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Keith. Right. Okay. Bye. bye.